Welcome to Glossop Caravans, one of the largest dealers in the UK for the latest instalments in our online club show special. It's a time of year when manufacturers launch their new season caravans and there's lots of exciting products and innovations to see here. So first up, Eldis has introduced a new layout to its Crusader range for 2021. It's this, it's the Borealis. It's an eight foot wide caravan, a twin axle Tora. Let's take a little look inside. Inside the Borealis, it features this sociable L-shaped lounge up front with a bracket on the sidewall to mount a TV. But it's at the back of the van in the bedroom area where it's even more interesting. Here's a 2021 season Sprite Super Quattro FB from the Swift Group. It's their entry level range. It's been given a freshen up for the season ahead and I think it looks great. New for 2021 from Coachman Caravans, this Laser XL looks absolutely fantastic. I really recommend you take a look at it. And if money is no option, be sure to take a look at the new Buccaneer Bermuda, new for 2021, an L lounge up front, an island bed at the rear, priced at a little over £36,000 though. But if you're new to this, well, you're in the right place. I'm here to help you discover caravanning. Here are my top 10 tips to help you buy your first caravan and get ready for your first outing in it. Tip number one, know your license, know your weight. It's not all car and caravan outfits are as lightweight as this classic combo. The first step on the road to happy caravanning is to understand what your driving license entitles you to drive and to know the key weights for your tow car and any caravan you're considering towing so it's a safe and legal match. Check out our video, how to match a car and caravan safely. Welcome to the Camping and Caravanning Club series of how-to videos. We're going to show you how to match a tow car with a caravan so it's a legal, safe and stable outfit on the road. Now in general it's best to use the heaviest and most powerful car to tow the lightest possible caravan. Our Ian will explain four key figures that you need to consider. The car's curb weight, this is the mass of the vehicle in running order. The car's towing limit which can be calculated from the weight plate. This is the maximum weight the car is designed to tow. The car's gross train weight. This is the maximum a fully loaded car and caravan can weigh combined. The caravan's maximum technically permissible laden mass, MTPLM, this is the maximum weight for a fully loaded caravan. You'll find these figures on the weight plate of your car and caravan and also in the handbook. With all their usual kit on board, most caravans will tour with their unit approaching its maximum weight. Next, what is the car's curb weight and what is the caravan's maximum technically permissible laden mass is MTPLM? Is it less than 85% of the car's curb weight? For those new to caravanning, never tow more than 85% of that car's curb weight. So when matching a caravan and tow car, always use the caravan's MTPLM. Experienced caravanners may tow up to 100% of the car's curb weight, but should never tow over that figure. Next, check is the caravan's MTPLM less than the car's towing limit. Check the caravan's nose weight. This is the downforce that the hitch head applies to the tow ball. Ensure it's not greater than the car's tow ball limit. Check your driving license. If you passed your test before 1st of January 1997, you'll have the B plus E entitlement categories listed on the back of your pink license card. This means you can drive car and caravan combinations up to 8,250 kilos. If you passed your test from 1st January 1997, you'll just have the B and B1 categories on your driving license. If you want to tow a caravan above 750 kilos, then the combined plated weight of car and caravan must not be more than 3,500 kilos. Alternatively, if you have a heavy tow car up to 3,500 kilos max weight, you can tow a trailer up to 750 kilos behind it. If you have a lighter car, you can tow a heavier caravan, but the combined weight must be no more than 3,500 kilos. To drive a larger outfit, you'll need to pass an additional test to add the B plus E category to your license. The club offers a free online towing match service for members that produces a full report. And best of all, when trying to shortlist cars or caravans, the system offers multiple matching against either your current car or caravan. Visit our website to take a look. With these simple steps, you'll be matching car and caravan outfits with confidence in no time at all, so you'll be safe and legal on the road. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out others in our how-to series at our club website or on our YouTube channel. Happy camping and caravanning. Tip number two, where is your caravan going to live? Many caravanners keep their pride and joy on the driveway where it's handy for a quick weekend getaway. Others prefer to rent space in a storage compound or similar. Some camping and caravanning club sites offer storage or you can find an operator at the Caravan Storage Site Owners Association. 
So you're insure where you're keeping the van as it will affect your premium. Now, you don't need insurance to tow a van on the road. It's actually covered by your tow car's insurance when hitched up, but comprehensive cover will protect you in the event of theft or damage. It's a great idea to get it. Tip number three, think about your ideal caravan layout. For example, do you want a fixed bed or are you happy to make up the bed from sofas and have more space during the daytime? How many people do you plan to sleep in your caravan on a regular basis and how wide and long do those beds need to be? Do you want bunk beds for the kids? Is there room in the bathroom to help little ones with washing and teeth brushing? So some dealers let you hire a caravan for a test weekend and then you can get a real feel for the layout and whether it works for you. Tip number four, set your budget and stick to it. So it's easy to fall victim to shiny van syndrome and spend far more than you wanted to on your first caravan purchase. So decide your budget and be very firm about sticking to that budget. You may find that once you live with the caravan for a while, you'll discover that certain layout features don't work for you while others do. So choosing a used caravan first, you can learn what you actually need before considering the extra expense of buying a new caravan next time round. A new starter caravan will set you back about £15,000, but a pre-owned caravan could be yours for as little as £500, but in that case it would be a private sale and it's definitely a case of buyer beware. So if you're not DIY minded yourself, take someone with you who knows about caravans or book a pre-purchase inspection from a reputable caravan engineer. Buying from a reputable local dealer though means you'll benefit from a warranty period, so if problems do occur, you won't have far to go to get them put right. Tip number five is get yourself kitted out. Now don't go mad on accessories at first, there are just a few basics you need, such as leveling ramps to keep you on an even keel on site. You also need an aqua roll and a waste master for water in and for water out. You'll need toilet chemicals, which are special additives to help keep the littlest room in the van smelling sweet. And you'll need an electric hookup lead to enable your caravan to run off mains electricity on site. You'll need a gas bottle and spanner, and you'll need a caravan step. It can be a long way down without one. When it comes to pots and pans, you can buy special caravan kit, or you can use kit from home just to get started. Do invest in a camping table and chairs. You can't beat sitting outside the unit with a glass of wine. Do invest in safety equipment, such as a carbon monoxide alarm and a fire extinguisher. And do buy a pair of towing mirrors. They're essential to stay on the right side of the law. Tip number six, know how to load your caravan safely. It's also important to know your speed limits. Cars towing caravans are restricted to 50 miles per hour on a single carriageway and 60 miles per hour on a dual carriageway or motorway. And don't forget that you can't go in the right-hand lane of a three or more lane motorway unless you're instructed to by someone with the legal authority to do so. Now remember that everything you put inside the caravan counts towards your towing limits. It's important that you know where to place heavier items and where the lighter items should go. We show you how, in our video, how to load a caravan for safer towing. Welcome to the Camping and Caravanning Club series of how-to videos. We're going to show you how to load your caravan so it's safe and stable on the road. Our Ian Hewlett will share his four top tips to ensure a smoother journey. The first thing you need to consider is your caravan's payload. This is the total weight of items you're allowed to carry in the caravan for personal use and also includes gas cylinders and leisure battery. You can check the loaded weight at your local weigh bridge to be sure you're not exceeding the caravan's maximum technically permissible laden mass. This is on the van's plate, so track the massing running order to find your caravan's payload, or you can just weigh each item on a set of bathroom scales. When loading the caravan, ensure that heavy items are placed as close to the axle as possible. Medium weight items can go fore or aft of the axle, and lighter weight items can go up high. Check the caravan nose weight before hitching up to your tow car. For example, using a nose weight gauge like this one. Nose weight is the weight your caravan's hitch applies to the car's tow ball. Aim for between 5-7% to of the caravan's laden weight and be sure not to exceed the car's tow ball limit. Adjust payload on board to meet this figure. As a last check before hitting the road, check from side on how your caravan looks. As it's hitched up to the tow car, it should be level or slightly nosed down to ensure a safe, even handling experience on the road. Caravans are safe and accidents are rare and by following these tips you'll be just fine. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out our others in our how-to series at our club website or at our YouTube channel. Happy camping and caravanning.
Tip number seven, how to hitch up your caravan and go. So now you've brought the perfect caravan for you, it's time to think about heading out there to a campsite. Now towing isn't hard and it gets easier with practice. First of all though, be sure to visit a local campsite on your first outing and ensure your fuel tank is full enough to avoid having to refill with the caravan hitched up to the tow car. Fuel stations can be daunting with a caravan in tow. Here's our simple guide how to hitch up your car and caravan safely. Welcome to the Camping and Caravaning Club series of how-to videos. We're going to show you just how easy it is to hitch up your caravan to your tow car safely and securely every time you tour. Our only in Hewlett will help walk you through the eight simple steps. Check the caravan handbrake is on and the vehicle handbrake is also applied. Attach the breakaway cable and then lower the hitch onto the ball by winding the jockey wheel. You will get an indicator at the front and inside in most coupling types. Check the caravan is securely coupled by using the jockey wheel to raise the rear of the car on its suspension a few inches. Once you're happy with that, loosen the jockey wheel and stone. Next, connect the electrical plug. Make sure it's fully engaged. Release the caravan handbrake and then do road light checks. Let's say you're ready to hit the road and head off on holiday. Now we've got a checklist for your wallet and also a handy sticker for your caravan's A-frame. To grab one, just come see us at a camping or caravanning show. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out our others in our how-to series at the club website or at our YouTube channel. Happy camping and caravanning. Tip number eight, practice makes perfect. What about reversing though? Isn't that the hardest thing to do with a car and caravan? Not really. With a bit of practice, it soon becomes second nature. Watch our video, How to Reverse a Caravan. Welcome to the Camping and Caravaning Club series of how-to videos. Now, reversing a caravan can seem difficult and even put some potential caravanners off our great pastime, but guess what? It's easy with a bit of know-how and a spot of practice. I'm here with Camping and Caravaning Magazine's Ian Hewlett and Candy Evans to show you how it's done simply and safely. The key to reversing a caravan is realising you need to turn the car's steering wheel in the opposite direction to the one you'd expect to get the caravan moving. If you want the caravan to turn to your left as you're seated in the car, steer your car front wheels to the right so that if your hands are on the wheel at a quarter to three, bring your right hand down. And the second main point is to take things really slowly so you can correct things if, or perhaps when, they start to go a bit awry. Before reversing, make sure you've got a clear view down the caravan using your extension mirrors. It's also a big help to have someone watching to check for obstacles in any blind spots, but make sure they're standing at a safe distance. Start with reversing in a straight line. As you go back, if you see more of the caravan appearing in one side mirror than the other and you want to straighten up, steer towards the caravan. Or to look at it another way, steer as if you wanted to drive towards the mirror where you can see the caravan looming and the outfit will straighten up. So if the caravan starts to appear fuller in your right-hand side mirror, bring your right hand down. If it appears fuller on your left-hand side mirror, bring your left hand down. If the caravan and its side walls appear evenly proportioned and angled in both wing mirrors, you're reversing in a straight line. Now we're moving on to reversing around the corner to your right. You'll often need to reverse around a corner to position your caravan on its pitch. This is a simpler manoeuvre than reversing around a corner to the left. You should have good visibility through your driver's side window without the need to crane your neck and peer through your car's headrests and pillars. Drive your caravan past the pitch until the wheels of the caravan are just beyond the edge of it. Remember you need to steer in what might feel like the wrong direction at the start of the turn. To reverse the van to your right, you need to turn the steering wheel anti-clockwise to the left to begin. Apply full lock to the car's steering wheel to turn the caravan sharply to begin with. The car pushes the caravan nose and it will turn quite quickly. Once it's heading in the right direction, if you continue to steer left in the car, the outfit will jackknife. So adjust the steering so it follows the caravan's course as you edge back towards the pitch. Again, if the van doesn't end up exactly where you wanted it, 
simply pull forward a short distance and reverse again. Don't forget, single axle caravans can be pretty easy to manoeuvre by hand, so if you don't reverse your van into its pitch perfectly, you can always unhitch and move it by hand, if it's a level, firm pitch. Though be aware of the weight, and don't try this if there's any chance of the caravan rolling out of control. Now we're moving on to reversing around a corner to your left. Start by driving past the pitch until the wheels of the caravan are just beyond the edge of it. Remember you need to steer in what feels like the wrong direction at the start of the turn. If you want to reverse the caravan to the left, you need to turn the steering wheel clockwise to the right to begin with. Apply full lock to the car's steering wheel to turn the caravan sharply to begin with. The car pushes the caravan's nose around quite quickly. Once it's started to turn, you'll need to straighten up the steering wheel fairly swiftly to prevent the outfit jackknifing. This is when the caravan gets stuck at an L or even a V-shaped angle to the tow car and simply won't move. If this begins to happen, stop and drive the car forward a little using the opposite lock to straighten up. Once the caravan has turned, adjust the steering wheel so it follows the caravan's course as you edge back towards the pitch. At this point, the steering wheel positioning is more similar to reversing into the same space without a caravan, but it's still best to follow the route of the caravan in your mirrors. Small movements of the steering wheel should now be enough to tweak your direction. If the van doesn't end up exactly where you wanted it, simply pull forward a bit and reverse again. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out others in our how-to series on our YouTube channel and on our magazine website. Happy caravanning. Tip number nine, look after your assets. Just as with a car, it's important to plan in an annual service and a bit of TLC for your caravan. Every year, booking in with your dealer or your local approved workshop for an annual habitation service. During this service, the gas and electricity systems are checked for safety and the units inspected for signs of damp. Having a full service history protects the value of your caravan and will help you get a good price if and when you decide to sell it. Finally, tip number 10, don't be shy of DIY checks. There are things that you can do to your caravan yourself. Check your road lights every time you hitch up and get ready for the road. And give the body worker a regular clean and polish. And finally, don't forget to check your tires. Here's our video on how to care for your caravan's tires. Welcome to the Camping and Caravaning Club series of how-to videos. Now, having the right tires fitted to your car, caravan or motorhome and ensuring they're inflated to the correct pressure is crucial for your safety on the road. They must be roadworthy and regularly checked for damage or wear so they can grip the road in most weather conditions. Our Candy Evans and Ian Geddes are here to show you how to understand and inspect your tires to keep them in tip-top condition. All tyres will have codes on the sidewalls to tell you the maximum load they can carry and how fast you may drive, also known as their speed rating. When you are looking at replacement tyres, avoid going to a lower speed or load index unless you are sure the tyres can still cope with the demands. A motorhome, for example, can often be loaded up to almost its weight limits all the time, which puts a big load on the tyres. This is why some tyre makers have produced camper tyres or CP tyres. These are designed to hold their pressure for longer, even when they're not used frequently, in comparison to their commercial counterparts. Taking a tyre beyond its weight limit is classed as overloading making it potentially illegal on the road and unsafe. Ideally, a tyre will be supplied with a higher load capacity than it's strictly necessary so you won't exceed its limits, even in extreme circumstances. If in any doubt, check your handbook or with your supplier. It's the air pressure inside the tyre that supports the vehicle, so it's very important to make sure it's right. Again, the recommended tyre pressure for your car, caravan, motorhome or trailer should be in the owner's manual and you'll find tyre pressures for your caravan or motorhome will generally be higher than for a car. If you can't find the manual, you can work out the pressures. You'll need to go to a weighbridge or use a suitable set of scales to find the weight on each tyre. Then you'll need to contact the tyre manufacturer, give the size and model of the tyre and your axle weight, and they'll tell you what the correct pressure should be. Car manufacturers often suggest you increase the pressure in your tyres when you're carrying a full load or towing. This information should be on a sticker on the car somewhere. On our Land Rover, it's here. Checking the tyre pressure on your caravan or motorhome is similar to doing it for your car, though you may need a heavy duty pump to inflate the tyres. Most foot pumps will incorporate a gauge, or you could choose a pump like this that runs off a 12 volt socket. If you use a heavy duty pump, you may need to connect it straight to your 12 volt battery. There are also a wide range of small pressure gauges available, and always remember to check your tyre pressures when they're cold. We'd recommend a visual inspection of the condition of your tyres and the inflation pressures at least monthly 
and before every long journey. Look for cracks, cuts, bulges or any distortion of the tread and the side walls. To check the inner side wall, use a torch to help. Remove any stones or other debris trapped in the tread and don't forget to check the condition of a spare tyre should you have one. If you discover even wear, get the vehicle suspension checked. If the vehicle is left unused for a long time, the tyres will be exposed to sunlight for long stretches, they may well age quicker. If you can, cover them, but it must be with a breathable fabric. Tyres should be replaced seven years from the date of manufacture or before, even if they appear to be in good condition. Check your tread depth too. The legal minimum is 1.6mm for most tyres. You can use a dedicated gauge for this, or you can offer up a 20 pence piece into the tread. If you can't see the shoulders of the tyre, you've got plenty of tread left. We'd recommend not going below 3mm of tread. A modern tyre has a lot of information written on its side wall. Only some of it has any importance to us, the user. Let's go through it. Starting with the date mark. It says 2518, so this tyre was made in week 25, 2018. It's still quite a young tyre and got plenty of life left in it. Next we have the size, 215-55R16. So it is 215mm wide, it's a 55 aspect ratio, it's 55% height to width. The R means it's a radial, and 16 means it's on a 16 inch rim. Next we have 97V. 97 is its load index, and that refers to a chart that you can look up to see what weight this tyre can carry. V is the speed rating. V is 150 miles an hour maximum. Many cars now come with a post-puncture seal kit as an alternative to a spare wheel, and these sealants can also be bought separately. The kit usually includes a fluid and a pump, or a one-shot aerosol, and it's designed to act as an emergency fix, delivering a sealing fluid that closes up the puncture. These are only effective if the puncture's in the tread portion of the tyre. If you get a puncture on a car tyre when you're towing, check your car's handbook to see what the manufacturer recommends. There may be specific advice regarding compact spare wheels or sealants. When a tyre deflates, it can move across the wheel. With nothing to grip it, the edges slip into the middle of the wheel, the part known as the well, and the wheel loses its traction, but you might lose control. To help stop this, you can fit a well filler, like a tyre-on band. This can prevent the tyre coming off your trailer or caravan and help you come safely to a halt. Many insurance companies offer discounts on premiums if you have a set fitted. Tyre pressure monitoring systems are also becoming increasingly popular and available to retrofit for cars, caravans and motorhomes. In many cases, external sensors replace the wheel valve caps. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out others in our how-to series on our YouTube channel. I hope these 10 tips have put you on the right road to discovering caravanning. For more information on getting started, visit the club's website at newtocamping.co.uk and be sure to tune in to our social channels for the rest of our online club show special week. Happy caravanning.